Welcome everyone to the very first episode of Sit Down with Shani. Now I'm very, very lucky today to be interviewing one of our Collingwood Magpie netballers. Um, and today I have Molly Jovic. Molly, welcome. Hi, Shans. Hey, thanks for being my first guest. Thanks for having me. No worries. So we'll just have a little bit of a chat um, offline. Um, and we know that Australia is broad in culture. Um, but your name, Jovic, it has a different sound. So tell us a bit how, how it's been pronounced previously. So I say Jovic, but that is technically incorrect. And my father would probably give me a slap across the hands because it's actually J's are wise in Serbian. So it's more Jovic. Um, think of um, Djokovic. Yeah. People say it with the J, so I don't know, but itch at the end and it's Jovic. Yeah. Okay. So do you want me to like call up the commentators and have a word to them? So I'm, I'm okay with it, but maybe for my dad's sake, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> all right, cool. I'll get them onto it ASAP. Um, so first of all, and we're going to touch on this a little bit later, but congratulations on your very first Super Netball game on the weekend. Thank you. Very exciting. Yeah, it is. It's such a phenomenal achievement. Um, but as I said, we are going to touch on that a little bit later. Um, so as of Monday, because obviously you're up at the Sunshine Coast at the moment, that you have done your two weeks isolation. And is it true that you're now free? Yes, I think technically we are Queenslanders now. Um, we still can't go out for like dinner or um, breakfast, lunch and sit down at a cafe. Like everything has to be takeaway, but so much better than being locked in a hotel room for two weeks. So freedom. Yeah. So that's what I was going to say. Is that the difference? So you can still, you're allowed to go out for walks. You can get takeaway. Yeah. Um, so those are the things that you can do that you couldn't previously. Yeah. I think if we're going to go somewhere where there's lots of people, it's just put your mask on and be sensible yeah so before that obviously it was the two weeks in isolation talk to us a bit about that were you just locked in your room for two weeks yes and no when we first got there it was just you and your roommate um which was good that we had a roommate um because we get some socializing um it and we had our own bath own bathrooms, own kitchen, and we just had a door that we could open and socialise a little bit um, and then close it at night. So that was good. But we also could train. So, I mean, we still got to see everyone for part of the day, which was really good. And then as we got our next test done and they all came back fine, then we could slowly go into other people's rooms and things like that because we occupied, like, a, a level. So it was all right if we were because we were considered a group, it was all right if we were together. It was more just stay away from the public. Oh, that's so interesting. So yeah. who was your roommate throughout that time? I had Melissa Bragg. I still have <laughs> Melissa Bragg. She talks a lot, yeah. but we love her. We love her. <laughs> I was going to say, what are, your, what are the things that your roomie does? Like, is there any snoring is there any excuse the language but farting you know like we're just stuck with like like what are the deepest darkest secrets of melissa bragg i am glad that i can't hear anything she's she's she stays up late and she watches tv and i go to bed early i can't hear anything i swear she she says she's on the phone until 12 o'clock can't hear a thing which is great and she's pretty clean and tidy as well so i can't really have a go at her but i am glad that i'm not rooming with uh Matilda Garrett and Gabby Sinclair because those two with the bodily gases is not great. <laughs> so good. And because I know I was never a favourite roomie, like I was really messy. <laughs> so is, are they messy as well or is it just their bodily gases? Yeah, Gabby, I did walk into her room in quarantine and her stuff was just absolutely everywhere, all over the floor. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so glad that you were not my roommate. But then Matilda's room is the same. So, you know, they work for each other. 
Absolutely. I know that I always really struggled uh, rooming with clean people because I was like, why are your clothes in a pile like folded? It just didn't make sense to me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, so it is your first year um, in Super Netball, which is really exciting. And so this whole experience, full stop, would have been new for you. But it's just like a whole different experience on top of that again. So how has this first year of Super Netball and having it been delayed and then having to shift your life up to Queensland, how has this shaped your experience of netball? Yeah, it's definitely, um, I guess, last year when I signed the replacement contract for Kelsey initially, like I would never have guessed that I'd be living in the Sunshine Coast now for who knows the unforeseen future. Um, but I guess everyone's just been rolling with it. Like we had the first lockdown where we had to get out of the Holden Centre and do a bit of training by ourselves at home. And there was a lot of doubt that there even was going to be a season. So then when there was talks about hubs again, potentially getting something happening, I was just stoked because this was potentially my only opportunity to ever play at this level. So absolutely, I'm going to take it on board and move my life to Queensland or wherever it may be. Um, but I guess it does make it easier that I don't have kids and I don't have, you know, things that are really difficult to leave behind at home. So, I mean, I definitely feel for the coaching staff who have their kids at home as well. And like, I guess the uncertainty about how long we're going to be here, but yeah, putting it into perspective and knowing what other people have sacrificed, um, makes it really worth it. Oh, I could imagine. And I would also imagine that it would just make your bonds so much stronger up there because you're then becoming each other's family and having to rely on each other and help each other out. Because I'm sure, although it would be nice to finally be up there and, and playing, there'd still be some pretty tough times for people throughout that as well. Um, so what did you have to leave behind? Because we all know netball was aren't full-time athletes, you know, we don't get the dosh. So what were you studying? Were you working on the side? Um, what, what were you doing before you had to go up to Queensland? So I'm an accountant. I work at Deloitte. And I, since we started training back in November last year, I've been working part-time for Deloitte. Um, and then obviously when the shutdown happened, um, Deloitte moved all their work as well remotely. So that worked really well. I could actually do some more work while I was training from home. Uh, now I'm on a bit of a career break because obviously it's a bit difficult juggling the training times because obviously everything's changing every week, depending where we're playing. And because obviously other teams are using the facilities that we're using. So training times have to be more flexible. So I've left that behind. Um, oh, but yeah, cool. it's actually, yeah, it's, it's good though. I'm taking it as a little break to focus on netball for this short period of time. Yeah, and thank you so much for that insight. Like it just shows the fact that you've actually had to step away from your job um, and not only just due to COVID, obviously there's been a lot of people losing their job, but for you to mm. choose that to pursue your, your netball career just shows how much that you've had to sacrifice. And so, you know, I really hope that it continues to be your upward um, trajectory because then coming into, obviously you playing your first game on the weekend, which is so exciting. That must've just been the biggest reward for you. Yeah, it was awesome. and obviously so grateful to have that opportunity but I have to say I've never been so nervous that <laughs> I was in those like last three days leading up to it and I think because we had so much downtime in quarantine as well it was like all oh, you think God. about um yes. but yeah so so happy that it's done now you know let's not yep. talk about my first touch because I dropped the ball but <laughs> that, that's the nerves though just get it out of the way yeah. early and then from there you are flying yeah no I'm just glad that the first touch you know the first time on court is done now and I can move on and those nerves are gone oh and that's so good so those of you at home obviously watching 
Um, when you think about a game before you go out and play, you actually exert the same amount of energy, almost similar amounts of energy to when you're actually out there playing. And so for you, Molly, being there, just replaying, you know, the game in your head and almost doing too much preparation because you would have had that much time on your hands and wanted, would have wanted to nail it, you would have been absolutely exhausted. Yeah, I think Sunday night I had the best night's sleep that I've actually had the whole time in quarantine. <laughs> Yes. Oh, it's just awesome. I remember my first game. We're going back to like 2004 here. But <laughs> I remember I just didn't want to take the court. Like I was happy sitting back and I was just like, you guys are doing a great job. Like you, you. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. I understand, um, the nerves that you would have had. And how was the difference of having like the substitute being able to run on and off and the two point shot? Like how was it with the team wrapping your head around all of that? Yeah, I think substitutions was fine. Like we'd already kind of dealt with that early preseason days and I guess playing a &L last year that was already implemented. So that was fine. Obviously the two point shot was a bit um, of a change and I think there's a lot of strategy and talk being put into it but um, it's actually quite exciting like that the games can blow out or you can bring a game back that fast now so yeah it's different um, and definitely another element to have to think about during the game yeah yeah absolutely and I agree I really enjoyed watching like even if a team was you know a fair bit up then you had the opportunity to be able to pick yeah. that back so quickly so yeah I, I really liked it more so than probably what I thought that I would have um, yeah I agree yeah so obviously it was like so close with the Vixens really tough so what was the messaging from Rob moving into next week against the Lightning I think there were a couple of little scenario situations that we just wanted to nail after um, the Vixens game. And we've been working on that at training. And apart from that, we were celebrating that we did have such a good game for basically three quarters and 10 minutes. It was just the last five minutes that everything kind of came apart a little bit. So we just rewarded, we were rewarded for that period of time, but also just clearing up a little couple of situations throughout the game. Absolutely, because you do have such a new and also a young, quite a young team in comparison to the Vixens. So you must have been so proud because you could tell how hard you'd worked on that structure. And so for that to be able to um, come out and be executed, I would imagine, yeah, would have been really rewarding. Yeah, and obviously the Brown sisters coming back and playing together. So... There was a lot of things that happened that were really good for that game as well. Yeah. And did you look up to them as a younger netballer growing up? Absolutely. Maddie was always someone that you wanted to be like. Um, and then Kelsey in more recent years. And so me last year when I got the opportunity to be uh, a temporary replacement player for Kelsey, I was just stoked that... I could potentially even train with them. Um, even if I didn't get an opportunity come season time that I got that like experience sitting underneath them. So it's kind of a bit of a shock now that I am playing beside them. Yeah, that's so exciting. And once again, I just want to say like you just did such a phenomenal job to be able to step up at this level and just, you were out there on court, you looked like an absolute natural out there. Um, and I, can't imagine how those nerves would have felt. So, yeah, well done. Um, just keep going. It's, it's awesome. Um, so we've had the series chats now. So we're going to go to some, some fun stuff. So I looked on the website and I got your fun facts. So one of the biggest things you miss at the moment is your dog. Yes. Maisie. Yes. <laughs> What's her name? Macy? Maisie. 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 Yeah. yeah. And what breed? Grudel, Golden Retriever slash Poodle. Oh, and have you had any Zoom sessions with Maisie? I, yes, I've had a couple, but I've been texting Dad on the regular asking for more content. Yeah. He's been a bit slack with the photos, but yeah. yes, we have you had a couple of chats. <laughs> Get it together, please. <laughs> Daughter needs puppy content. Stat. <laughs> Absolutely. Need her playing well, so. 
get that content well, send up. me up my dog. Now that we're settled here, I'm like, it would be great to have a team dog. Yes, absolutely. I think that would make we everyone should... happier. Exactly. We should adopt a team dog. And then when we come back to Melbourne, I'm happy to take it in. I'm not sure my father will be okay with that, but I am. <laughs> Oh, I'm all about that. My cats are absolutely keeping me sane during COVID. So, yeah, and I'm sure Rob would love that too because he's an animal person. So He is, but he's a bit um, selective of what type of animals that he likes because apparently my dog is not a real dog, according to Rob. Oh, is it like a toy dog? No, it's because... So, Maisie is like quite large because she's got yeah. poodle in her and golden retriever so but he doesn't like her because of the poodle component apparently poodles aren't real dogs his oh, idea of a are. real dog yeah i know his idea of a real dog is like a german shepherd or you know like a hunting dog something like that yeah one that he could never train yeah so. exactly <laughs> um, you wanted to go in a camper van around Australia as a holiday I need to ask was this pre or post COVID since we're not going to be able to go overseas for a while this was pre COVID I think this was like post bushfire season and I thought how cool would it be to like go to like even drive up the east coast of Australia and stop through all those beaches um but yeah, now that's really suited. As long as Victoria eventually opens its borders. <laughs> just don't Otherwise come we'll just be doing a camper van around Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> no, after the season's over, just stay up there and do the rest of Australia. Huh? And that's, then when- That's a great idea. Sorry, family, not coming home until next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just do your training up and down some mountains. Yeah. It'll be fine. I just found that so interesting that that was your dream holiday and now it's all you can do. So yeah. that's a huge win. <laughs> Yay. Um, last one, you said that setbacks build character. So I was hoping you could share with us a setback that you've had and how it's helped you build character. Um, yeah, I guess I was always in the uh, Victorian State League program and I did bottom age, top age from 17s to 21s. And I got to top age 19s and I probably thought that it'd be an easy, um, not easy, but I thought that I probably was going to get selected into the Vic Fury or um, I think there was Flames at the time. And I actually had about three or four years that I didn't even make it past the first round of selections. And I think that for me at that point in time, I was questioning whether I would even um, continue putting myself out there because I felt like I was just not the type of person that they wanted. Um, but my mother made sure that I kept putting myself out there, regardless if the next year I'd be devastated again, um, not getting selection. And I mean, even, so I did make Fury for two years eventually. Um, and then last year I decided to have a break from um, a and &L. And my, um, so, and then obviously Maddie got injured for pies, which meant that a player, a training partner for Tassie Magpies was going up to their team and there was a spot. And I got a phone call asking if I'd like to come and help out for a couple of games and I thought, why not? I'll give it a go. And now I'm here. So, I've got I mean, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it's interesting how everything pans out eventually because um, there was periods of time where I thought that I was giving it everything and wasn't getting any reward, but it probably made me a lot stronger and more resilient to have those setbacks um, for now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's such a great story. Thank you so much for sharing because I know there's so many girls, young girls, but also women out there who were probably in that exact same boat that are probably thinking, do we stick with it? Do we not? Do we keep training during COVID? Um, so yeah. yeah, just that story of resilience is amazing. So thank you for sharing. No worries. All right. So yeah, 
serious stuff definitely done now. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I have created a new segment for Sit Down with Shani. And this segment is tying in our wonderful sponsor of Nike and it's called Just Do It. So Molly, you just have to do what I say. Okay. Are you ready? ready? I'm not sure. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Okay, let's do it. Let's okay, do it. Bear, bear with me. Let's do it. We're just going to do it because that's what we do here at the Magpies. We're committed and we're just going to do it. So what we're going to do is you're going to listen to this man and then I'm going to come back to our screen and then you are going to make the sound of a magpie to show how committed you really are to the Collingwood Magpies. So oh I just want to do <laughs> So, oh I'm dear! A um, an idea of um, what it sounds like. How do you do it? Because I've tried off air. I can't do it to save my life. How do you make the magpie sound? Yeah, well, I always tell people because I get asked a lot. You've got to do it from your throat. So it's <laughs> <laughs> then you've got to mix it together. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh God. God. So, Molly. Not happy with you right now. <laughs> Can you, you, you just have to do it. You've got to make the sound of a magpie. Let's go to prove your <laughs> magpie-ness. I can't do it. You can, come on. Okay. You've got this. Oh, God. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to go. Okay, okay. Go, go, go. <laughs> That's as good as it's... I cannot do that again. <laughs> All right, Shani, I think you have to do it. If I have to do it, you have to do it. What? That was not yeah. part of the deal. Yes, if I have to do it and humiliate myself, you have to do it. All right. <laughs> You're actually okay. I'm not gonna lie, I've been practicing, but <laughs> <laughs> I think it just shows that I'm more of, more of a magpie. But that's okay. You'll get Clearly. there. Molly. First year, you know. So You're a baby. <laughs> a few more weeks practice, but um, I just want to thank you so much again for being a part of Sit Down with Shani, and good luck this weekend against Lightning. We can't wait to watch you on Channel Nine. Thanks, Shans. All right, mate, have a good one.